Hello everybody, welcome to another video brought to you by Erotic Walrus. Today's topic is solo queues, specifically climbing the ladder, and why so many people say that it's hard. Well, because they're brown scrubs, that's why I am a high elo player who believes that if you put in the effort, you will see results. Yeah, mm, bro. Is that it? Everyone who says they find it difficult to climb should simply get good? Well, I think that's quite the irresponsible thing to say. Let's break down the problem here. Why is it hard to climb solo queue? Teammates seems to be one of the biggest reasons why, and when people say teammates, they really mean luck. Many channels have already gone through the reason why luck is not a viable excuse for why you are not gaining elo. You see, it all boils down to simple mathematics where if the chances of you getting bad teammates are the same for everyone else, then your opponents will always have one more bad player than your team, since you yourself is not a bad teammate. If this is true, then no matter how many times you lose because of your teammates, eventually you will edge out on top, giving you a positive win rate and therefore elo. But no, people claim that there is a higher power at work here and Rito has the crosshair aimed directly at their rear end and firing shot after shot whenever they are in series or promo games. I have had my fair share of DC and feeders on my team and it's true that I have lost many games with those variables. And the same is true for everyone else you play with. That Yasuo who is feeding top lane 011, believe it or not, he has been in a position where he did well and everyone else fed. Okay, maybe Yasuo is a bad example, but you know what I mean. There is nothing wrong with having bad teammates or trolls or feeders because statistically, everyone else is going through the same bullshit process called matchmaking. If you truly believe that the sole reason you cannot climb is 100% due to bad teammates, then that's just as far as you're gonna go. So if that is what you truly believe, then this video will not help you improve any more than a potato will help cure STI. Now, for those who are interested, here's a game that I played recently. Very early on, our top laner left the game, leaving the rest of our team to finish the game 4v5. Now I'm not going to tell you who won just yet, but I want to show you guys the process. Notice that our team does not give up, and this is true for all your games. If you have given up mentally, then the game is pretty much lost. At this point, it's about pressure. With one extra person on the enemy team, they can apply more pressure around the map. The advantage to this is that the enemy team will be split up for the majority of the time. As you can see, my team left me bot to free farm and pretty much rotated throughout top and mid to retaliate against the enemy's pressure. The enemy team left Fiora top to free farm as well. This process lasts for a while, and my teammates managed to catch the enemies out on several occasions due to better rotations, but everyone knew that we had to end the game fast if we want a better chance at winning. We went for a Baron attempt with the enemy mid and top laner down, but unfortunately Graves was able to get the 50-50 smite steal, prolonging the game even further. Now note that throughout all of this, my teammates never raged or said anything excessive once. We all made mistakes, but nobody dwelled on them. So the enemy team gets Baron, and the Tristan Nami advances onto our dying teammates. I simply come in and just clean up the two kills. Note that at this point in the game, I was not very fed. 5, 4, and 6, 243 CS at 30 minutes. Stats are nothing to brag about. So anyone could do this. The enemy made a mistake and I was at the right place at the right time. Or else that Tristana would have got the resets to kill all three of my teammates. Moving forward, I challenged the Fiora after taking top turret and die, giving a shutdown to her. The game then returns back to the enemies split pushing and trading their lives for objectives. As you can see here, the Fiora takes our inhibitor and then finds love right around the corner on her way out. Eventually, here, when the Graves, Tristana, and Nami sieges, Twisted Fate decides it was a good idea to continue pushing mid, even though we had hard engaged onto the rest of his team. Now at this point, it would have been good enough if TF just backed off and regrouped with his team, but instead, he decides to go for a greedy play, and dies for it. 
we proceed to take Baron and catching out the Fiora right after. As you can see for yourselves, the enemy team is not comprised of god tier players. They're making so many mistakes that if I were to list them out, you'd downvote the video due to too much redundant information. It's easy to watch the game and see the mistake everyone is making, but in the thick of it, it's always better to just remain cool-headed. Twisted Fate here is a true patriot who devotes his flesh and mind to their team's ideals, and that is to split push until their dicks burst, and it doesn't work. After much struggling, my team takes out the Nami and Tristana in the most anticlimactic fashion possible, and advance for the win. Of course, Graves is a man of culture and decides to do a one-man base race against four, while TF attempts a TSM vs CLG game three. Any minions right now? That's yeah, gonna be TSM tough. TSM is trying to cut off the minion wave. CLG is trying to deny that. They want the minions come in to deny the backdoor bonus. CLG could look to end the game if they can get these minions into the base because there's long spawn timers on both Bjergsen and Doublelift. It's critical that they kill off these minions. That's one hit, 19 seconds coming in, 30 for Hanser, and they are They're going, going to be for looking it. for Nexus turrets. They have so much damage. Since Garen and Biofrost are the only ones, the minions just get there to weaken the turret. Nine seconds on Bjergsen and double it. Since Garen's up, and it looks like they, they have the damage. It's gonna be Dardock on the turret. Guard going down, Fence Garen very low. Stixay goes down as well. The one for one there. And here comes Doublelift out of the base. He finds a true arrow. Eagle Eye Doublelift dropping down Huhi. And TSM's going coast to coast for the win. CLG go for the big play, but it ends up falling flat. TSM defend, and they will march down and end this game. Although we had Baron buffed minions, and as usual, he pays the price. We quickly advance to the Nexus turrets, and it is at this time Graves realizes that his teachings have betrayed him and starts to channel his recall, but then remembers what their team's foundation was based on and swiftly cancels. Now, my teammates were not high elo players, nor were we mechanically gifted. I simply had cooperative teammates. We didn't say anything excessive, we used pings to communicate, and we all knew what our role was in the game. The same could be said for the enemy team, but believe it or not, split pushing is a team game. That requires proper communication to pull off correctly. Now I'm going to end the video here, since I've talked enough. If you managed to watch until this point, which statistically is highly unlikely, then thank you. Please do leave a comment like or even dislike, letting me know where to improve on because ultimately these videos are pointless if no one is interested. Until next time, bye bye.